Welcome to Cartography and Geography Club, Episode 5. Today, we will focus on North American island nations. We will learn how to draw underwater features and coasts, and we'll also learn about important cities and landmarks. In addition, we'll have some fun with our hidden treasure pirate game and finish our episode with our fifth iteration of our time travel geography game. Today, you'll only need your starter pack, so let's jump in. Welcome to Cartography. I'm your host, Mark. I'd like to start by letting you know one of my favorite classes in school was science. My favorite part was learning about how things work and being able to do hands-on experiments. Make sure to let me know what your favorite class is and why below so I can get to know you better. Now let's get into cartography and geography. There are tens of thousands of islands in North America. Outside of the islands that are part of the North American mainland countries like the United States, Canada, and Mexico, all independent island nations in North America are within the region of the Caribbean. The Caribbean is home to 13 independent island nations and 15 dependencies. More than 7,000 individual islands can be found in the Caribbean Sea. These are located southeast of the Gulf of Mexico and the North American mainland. The Caribbean islands can be broken up into three groups. The first group is the Greater Antilles, which consists of the largest Caribbean islands. This is where you'll find countries like Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, uh, in addition to the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. The Lesser Antilles are the small islands in the south, where you'll find countries like Antigua and Barbado, St. Vincent and Grenadines, and Dominica, as well as dependencies like the Virgin Islands, Aruba, Martinique, and Curacao. The third island group is the Lucayan Archipelago, where the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands are located. The total population of the Caribbean is approximately 43 million, making it the least populous subregion of North America. Haiti is the most populous country in the Caribbean, with around 11.4 million people, while the tiny island dependency of Montserrat is the least populous, with less than 5,000 inhabitants. Cuba is the largest country in the Caribbean by land area, while St. Kitts and Nevis is the smallest, though the French dependency of St. Bart's is even smaller. Surprisingly, humans have been discovered from over 5000 BC in the Caribbean, with the earliest findings in Trinidad. Upon the European discovery of the Caribbean islands, there were three major indigenous people. These were the Taino, the Caribs, and the Saboni. The population of the Caribbean has had a long history of using the water around the islands for food and trade. On a piece of paper, draw an island nation with at least six different islands, with one of the islands specializing in food. Make sure to include a distance scale. Each island can hold 100 food and eats 20 food per day. If your boats can carry 80 food between islands a day, how many boats should you make? This is how I would do it. Once you are complete, take a picture of your map with the amount of boats and send it to me so I can feature it on our notifications page. Now let's cover some of North American island nation's notable features. The largest river in the Caribbean is the Cauto. River. The Cauto River is in the country of Cuba. It is 230 miles or 370 kilometers long and flows into the Caribbean Sea. The river originates in the Sierra Maestra mountain range 
at an elevation of over 600 meters or 1,900 feet. Rice, sugarcane, tobacco, and cattle are the primary architect agricultural beneficiaries along the, its course. It is only one of two navigatable rivers in all of North American island nations. The largest mountain in the Caribbean is Pico Duarte at 3,101 meters or 10,174 feet above sea level. It gives the Dominican Republic the 16th highest maximum elevation of any island in the world and 14th among all North American peaks. Interestingly, it is only a few meters taller than its twin, La Palona. The area has a oceanic climate that very few would associate as typical of a Caribbean island, with cool temperatures all year round, going several degrees below freezing during winter nights. The mountain and the surrounding landscapes are covered in forests and shrubbery that have adapted to the acidic soil. A wildfire in 2003 altered the landscape of a large section of the eastern side of the mountain. As of 2008, the hillside of the charred trees is now in new growth forest. While thousands of charred trees are still standing, a large variety of indigenous grasses and small plants are now growing. One of the largest beaches in the Caribbean is a 17 mile beach in Antigua and in Barbados. It is located on the Barbado Island and it separates the Caribbean from the Cordington Lagoon. Interestingly, it is empty most of the year due to its tremendous size and limited venues along the beach. Though the official size comparison is not done for North American island nations, one of the largest forests, if not the largest, is the Blue and John Crow Mountains in Jamaica. Located in Falmouth, Jamaica, this national park covers over 100,000 acres. As the country's first and only national park, the Lungs of Jamaica is a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site and once served as a refuge to the indigenous Tainos and Maroons. The park is now home to more than 800 species of plants and animals, including the largest butterfly in the Western hem Hemisphere, the Jamaican Swallowtail with a average wingspan of six inches. And many unique Caribbean birds like the elegant Jamaican lizard cuckoo and the tiny Jamaican peewee. The island with the largest coast in the Caribbean is Cuba. As the main island of the country of Cuba, it is 1,250 kilometers or 780 miles long, constituting most of the nation's land area. It is also the 17th largest island in the world by land area. With the entire island south of the Tropic of Cancer, the local climate is tropical, moderated by northeasterly trade winds that blow year round. The temperature is also shaped by the Caribbean current, which brings in warm water from the equator. This makes the climate of Cuba warmer than that of Hong Kong, which is at about the same latitude as Cuba, but has a subtropical rather than a tropical clim climate. A geographic representation of a coast is usually done with thin black lines with colors adjacent representing land on one side and light blue on the other side, indicating shallow water. On a separate piece of paper, draw as accurate a depiction of a coast as possible. Here's how I would do it. The largest ocean trench in the Caribbean is the Puerto Rico Trench. It is located on the boundary between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. This oceanic trench 
the deepest in the Atlantic, is associated with a complex transition between the Lesser Antilles subduction zone in the south and the major transform fault zone. The trench is 800 kilometers or 497 miles long and has a maximum depth of 8,376 meters or 27,480 feet or approximately 5.2 miles. This constitutes the single deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean. This point is commonly referred to as the as Milwaukee Deep. A geographic representation of a trench is usually done with dark blue surrounded by lighter colors of blue. On a separate piece of paper, draw a representation of a trench. Here's how I would do it. Now that you have the coast and trench sheets, put the trench on top of the coast sheet and place on your light up board in order to transfer the trench onto the coast, however you choose. This is how I would do it. Once you have finished, please take a picture and send it to me so I can post it in our announcements page. Now let's look at some landmarks in North American island nations. The Grand Etag Forest, Champ de Mars, and Pig Beach are three great ones. The Grand Etang Forest in Granada is located in St. George and protected as a national park. With varied elevations, the park is home to multiple ecological subsystems that include exotic wildlife like rare orchid, Mona monkeys, and colorful tropical mockingbirds. The reserve offers unmatched views from mountaintops like Mount Kwakwa, which overlooks Grand Etang Lake, previously the crater of an active volcano and now a cobalt blue crater lake. Champ de Mars is the biggest public park in the downtown area of Port-au-Prince, Haiti. It consists of a series of public squares divided by large boulevards. For much of Port-au-Prince's history, Champ de Mars was used for military parades until 1912, where it was remodeled into a racetrack with wrought iron viewing stands facing the National Palace. Its current design is from 1999, when it was rebuilt to celebrate the city's 250th anniversary. Pig Beach, located on Big Major K, is a beach on an uninhabited island, or K, located in Exuma, Bahamas. The island takes its unofficial name from the fact that it is populated by a colony of feral pigs, which lived on the island. There are three freshwater springs on the island. The pig population was estimated between 50 and 60 pigs as of 2019. On a separate piece of paper, draw a representation of each of these landmarks. After you draw these landmarks, use the light up board to transfer them onto your coast and trench map. Here is how I would do it. Once you are happy with your map, make sure to take a picture and send it to me to be placed on our website in our announcements page. Let's look at some smaller scale maps. North American island nations have a multitude of different architectural styles. Two of the best known are Cuban Colonial and Chatel House style. Cuban Colonial architecture was constructed during the period of Spanish rule between the 16th and 19th centuries. Cuban Colonial architecture can be identified by disproportionate stature majesty, order, neatness, respect, power, and comfort. In contrast to the Cuban colonial style, the Chatel House style is a Barbadian term for a small movable wooden house 
that working class people would occupy. The term goes back to the plantation days when the homeowners would buy houses designed to move from one proper to another. Chattel houses are set on blocks or a ground cell rather than being anchored into the ground. In addition, they are built entirely of wood and assembled without nails. This allowed them to be disassembled along with the blocks and move from place to place. Timbers were in pre-cut in standard lengths of 12 to 20 feet. The front facade t tends to be symmetrical with the door in the center between windows that were equally spaced. As the owner's financial si situation changed, additions would be made. The roofs were often made of corrugated metal made of iron. As for our next activity on a separate piece of paper, draw a building using elements of both the Cuban colonial and Chattel house style. Here's how I would do it. Once you are complete, please take a picture of your house and send it to me so we can feature it in our announcement section. Two of the most interesting cities in the Caribbean are Havana and Santo Domingo. Havana, Cuba is the capital city of Cuba. Havana is the country's main port and commercial center. The city has a population of 2.1 million inhabitants and it spans a total of 728 square kilometers or 281 square miles, making it the largest city by area. The most populous city and the fourth largest metropolitan area in the Caribbean region. The city of Havana was founded by the Spanish in the 16th century. It served as a springboard for the Spanish conquest of the Americas, becoming a stopping point for the Spanish galleons returning to Spain. Walls as well as forts were built to protect the city. The Elam Dares River traverses the city from south to north, entering the Straits of Florida a few miles west of the bay. The city has low hills through the city with a highest elevation of 200 feet or 60 meters. Santo Domingo is the capital and largest city of the Dominican Republic and the largest metropolitan area in the Caribbean by population. It is the site of the first university, first cathedral, first castle, first monastery, and first fortress in the New World. Santo Domingo is the cultural, financial, political, commercial, and industrial center of the Dominican Republic, with the vast majority of the country's most important industries being located within the city. Santo Domingo also served as the chief seaport of the country. The city's harbor at the mouth of the Ozama River accommodates the largest vessels, and the port handles both heavy passenger and freight traffic. As you probably know, the Caribbean was the setting of the movie franchise Pirates of the Caribbean. In the movies, Captain Jack Sparrow was continuously in search of treasure. For today's exercise, we'll be hunting for treasure. Put a circle around each treasure you find and send me a picture, your name, and how many treasures you found so I can post it in our notifications page. Here is the map. The final thing we'll be doing today is the fifth installment of a game we'll com be completing through the year. It is the near future and you are a detective for a time travel company. A group of criminals called the agent are going back in time to change the past. It is your responsibility to determine when, where, and what they're going to steal based on the clues that we were sent. Today's clues are found in the Caribbean country that it crashed, made for Nazi Germany by Douche Werft, and the date is when it crashed. Send your answers to me with your name for season one points to be posted on our notification section. That's all for episode five of Cartography and Geography Club. 
I hope you had fun, and I look forward to next week's episode on all of North America. Have a great week.